Hi everyone, we're starting chapter 5 in Cynthia Shelmerdine's book, and what we're doing first is introducing the second declension of nouns. This is a whole new set of nouns uh, that will really open up Greek as we're learning. We're going to be able to look at so many more nouns and types of nouns just by opening up the second declension. And it's just like the first declension with different forms, and like the first declension tended uh, to be feminine, we're going to find that the second declension tends to be masculine, but as the title of this uh, kind of unit suggests, we do have both. Uh, and just as there were masculine nouns of the first declension, we're going to see some of these feminine nouns of the second declension. These are rare, but we're going to teach them to you first so that you're disabused of any notion that just because it is second declension, it's masculine, or just because it's first declension, it's feminine. So let's get things going by first creating a, it's going to be a bit of a, a mega chart here. Um, I'll make sure I have the right size of font here. All right. Okay, here we go. I've got my pen together now. So let's start by creating this mega chart. Again, you can kind of follow along at home in Shelmerdine's uh, page 23. So this is going to be very similar to the chart that we just saw for uh, the second or the first declension in the last lesson. Uh, so we're going to further break this thing up into uh, singular and plural, and then our usual nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative, and again, ng-dav again down here. And then we're going to write both the article, this is just for practice as, as much as anything, um, but this is going to be masculine over here that we're dealing with. This is the more typical form. Uh, and then also the feminine over here, which, though rarer, still happens, and it will be worth knowing. So we have both the article, and then we're going to have the, the word itself in both case, cases. <laughs> cases, good at ha. Uh, and then also we're going to talk about the endings that are being deployed. So let's get... A bright color. Let's get a, a manly blue or something going on. I don't really buy that those uh, gender colors, but but we'll play with it right now. It'll be useful. So what were those articles again of the masculine sort? So we had ha. Uh, it's going to be a little bit too dark. Let's get a, a baby blue. So we had ha, and then two. Remember that only the nominative is both without a ta and without an accent, and then. Over the genitive and dative, we have circumflexes and ton here. Although, actually, I should uh, go back and uh, get that, make this accent grave because it's going to be followed by a word. And then vocative, again, remember that this is not an article, but we're going to use it O. Oh. And then the plural, hoi, tone, tois, tus. Again, we'll do that grave accent, and then uh, again, O, oh, but with the caveat that it's not really an article. Uh, and then the word that we're going to use is actually word. <laughs> I now see what I was doing wrong, but we're going to want to make this island. All right, so word, but uh, this will be familiar to some of you, logos, uh, Big word can mean a lot of things, word, speech, reason, rationale. Uh, we're just going to say word for right now. So ha logos is the word, accent on the penult. Uh, and then we can just kind of go through here. Um, and we're going to be following basically what we have for the article. Uh, we saw that already with the feminine, that the article tends to mirror uh, the standard form of the masculine word. So Logu, again, this is a short Omicron, as, as it has to be, uh, but the accent stays there. Um, logo, and then log on, as you would to an internet website. And then in the vocative, that Omicron Sigma becomes just a short Epsilon. I mentioned that in an earlier um, lesson. Remember that something in the feminine first declension or the masculine first declension, Neas, when we had that uh, in the nominative, 
uh, we saw that the vocative became nea ni a short alpha. This is the same sort of process. We have a, a you know in the first declension we have this alpha sigma that becomes a short alpha. Here we have an omicron sigma and it becomes a short another short syllable or short vowel, the epsilon. So o log, o word. That probably doesn't come up that much in Greek, but we're learning it anyway. And then here we go, hoi logoi, the words, tone, logon, and this is very important. Remember how in the feminine, anything, if we had tone, uh, let's do koron, we remember that kora itself had an accent on the penult, but we remember that in the first declension, that final o omicron, or sorry, omega nu, was actually an alpha omega nu. Uh, this had been formally accented, but then when it became contracted, we always were getting these omega nus with the circumflex accent in the genitive plural. We don't have that in masculine. Uh, the accent stays where it wants to stay. Uh, so that's somewhat of a good thing. Uh, it can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, we're, this accent will move around. Uh, it's not as predictable as the um, um, feminine form, but that's fine. So, hoi logoi, ton logon, tois logois, and then tus logus. Very regular. And then again, remember that rule uh, that in the plural, nominative and vocative are always identical. Uh, so that's easy. So, logoi. O logoi, O words. Uh, that actually does come up sort of in, in an Aristophanes play where uh, two speeches, one good and one bad, are both personified. So you can imagine some of these vocative expressions even towards something as strange as something like a word. All right, so let's, let's go into a, a pinkish color now, and let's do the feminine side, again, of the first declension. But for the article, we're just going to be going back to that paradigm we already know. Hey... Tase, te, tain, Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I started writing it there, tain, and then again there's no vocative article so we're saying to as a placeholder. Then the plural, high, tone, tice, toss, long alpha, and then o again in parentheses. So now we're going to get to a noun that is of the second declension but is feminine and that noun is going to be nesos which means island. Um, if you know the uh, Peloponnesus of the Peloponnesian War, it's the Pelops's island is what that means. Uh, so what we're saying there is that it's a, you know, if, if you know the kind of map of Greece, we've got it going down. This is not the best Peloponnesus, but uh, here's Athens, here's Sparta, uh, here's the rest of the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, this is the what, what's called the Isthmus, right? Uh, that's where Corinth is. Um, basically, if you were to put a canal through there, you have made this island of Pelops truly an island. Really, right now, it's just a peninsula. Uh, but that's Nasos in a uh, nutshell. So nasos, let's look what we have here. We have a circum we have the accent wants to fall on the penult. Uh, and here we have a short omicron sigma ending, so this long eta that's just part of the word has to become a circumflex. But let's move into the genitive, nesu. So again, this is much along, well, this is the, the genitive singular form we've seen so far uh, for both masculine first declensions and now second declensions. Uh, but then that's a diphthong, so this becomes a accented with an uh, acute. Uh, now we can also move to the um, uh, dative, neso. So again, we're following this more masculine pattern here, even though it is a feminine noun. And we'll also see this here, neson. Again, the accent goes back to a circumflex before the short. And then, just like logos, we're going to get a short epsilon, O island, plural. So we're going to be continuing along. We'll see that in everything, 
This feminine form looks just like the masculine form, but with a different article. This is different from masculine nouns of the first declension, where we had some items that looked somewhat more masculine. We had this ooh finish, not an ace finish, uh, but then everything else went feminine. Here we, we see a persistence of these typical masculine endings that we know both from a word like logos, but also from the masculine definite article. But anyway, getting back to nasoi, remember that this is one of those diphthongs that at the end of the word it becomes short, so that becomes, that remains in a way, a, a circumflex accent. Tone, nason, sorry, I don't need to rewrite the definite article there. Um, again, this isn't the first declension. We're not going to have to automatically put the accent there. If the accent naturally fell over the omega, it would be circumflex. But as it is, that accent wants to fall on the penult, on the eta. So that's actually an acute accent here. Again, the difference between masculine or second declension nouns and first declension. First declension, you always have the ac uh, circumflex over the omega. Second declension, sometimes. And in both of these cases, no. So now we get into nesois. This is a diphthong, but it's protected by that S, so that stays long. Acute accent. And then same, nesus, long, so that stays an acute. And then, as always, nominative and vocative plural endings or plural forms are identical. So, nesoi. So let's look at our endings. Uh, I say endings, but really we only have one type here. Uh, so we're going to have omicron sigma, omicron epsilon, omega with the uh, subscript iota, omicron nu, and then epsilon, oi, on, ois, us, and then again, just because it's equal, oi. So what we have going on here is a little bit easier than the first declension, um, but what's going to be tricky is you look at something like nesos, and throughout, it looks identical in terms of its endings to logos. There's no way to know that this is a feminine second declension noun, except for its dictionary entry and that it will become paired with these articles. So whereas, you know, neonias didn't look like any feminine first declension that we knew. Uh, never did a nominative end in this, right? We had those four types, A, B, C, D, but they were, they ended like that. We never had a alpha followed by a sigma. This was a distinct form of the first declension. Here in the second declension, morphologically, in terms of their form, there's no difference between masculine and feminine. However, just the nature of this word is bringing it together with this feminine article and the article or any adjectives, anything that agrees with this feminine noun, it's going to be the only way that we can tell them apart. So on the one hand, very easy to memorize now on a chart. Um, however, in, in practice, it's a little bit tough. You really have to remember that, hey, nasos is feminine. Other words, most other words of the second declension, like logos, are masculine. That'll do it for now. Take care.